videos from this particular topic and if you have not watched the videos i will provide you with the link in the description box below so please watch the full video if you like this video please like it share it and subscribe it and also click the bell icon so that you will get notifications if i am uploading new videos so let us start the video first question the hormone which has immune suppressive activity options a hpl b hcg c estrogen d progesterone answer is b hcg hcg that is human chorionic gonadotropin hormone so the hormone which has the immune suppressive activity is the hcg next question the hormone which induces vomiting in pregnancy options a estrogen b progesterone c prostaglandin d hcg answer is d hcg human chorionic gonadotropin so the hormone which induces vomiting in pregnancy is a hcg next question which of the following special investigation is used to identify structural chromosomal abnormality of fetus in utero options a maternal serum alpha fetoprotein b fish that is fluorescence in situ hybridization c human chorionic gonadotropin d acetyl cholinesterase answer is b that is fluorescence in situ hybridization so it is a special investigation uh, which is used to identify structural chromosomal abnormality of fetus in utero so fluorescence in situ hybridization or fish it is a molecular cytogenetic technique that you can detect chromosomal abnormalities that cannot be appreciated or that cannot be detected by standard chromosomal analysis next question pregnant woman is considered anemic when hemoglobin level is less than options a 11 g per deciliter b 14 g per deciliter c 12 g per deciliter d 10 g per deciliter answer is d that is 10 g per deciliter that is a pregnant woman is considered anemic when hemoglobin level is less than 10 g per deciliter next question weight of uterus during pregnancy options a 700 grams b 900 grams c 800 grams d 600 grams answer is b 900 grams that is at term pregnancy uh, at term pregnancy uterus enlarges from the 50 grams to between 900 to 1000 grams so weight of uterus during pregnancy that is at term it will be between 900 to 1000 grams next question inhibin a produced by corpus luteum is increased in options a trophoblastic disease b congenital heart disease c down syndrome d spinal defects answer is c down syndrome so the inhibin a produced by the corpus luteum is increased in down syndrome next question in alpha fetoprotein screening maternal blood sample is drawn at options a 15 to 18 weeks b 20 to 24 weeks c 10 to 11 weeks d 20 to 22 weeks answer is 15 to 18 weeks so in afp screening that is alpha fetoprotein screening maternal blood sample is drawn at 15 to 18 weeks so if it if this afp is elevated uh it it indicates that the uh, child the fetus is having some spina bifida and the decreased level of afp is seen uh, in conditions like down syndrome next question in spina bifida afp will be that is alpha fetoprotein will be options a increased b decreased c normal d slightly decreased answer is a increased so in spina bifida the alpha fetoprotein will be elevated that it is in increased
Next question. The test to determine the presence of amniotic fluid leakage. Options A. Fern test. B. Nitrosin test. C. Rubin test. D. A and B. So the answer is D, A and B. So the test to determine the presence of amniotic fluid leakage are the Fern test and the Nitrosin test. What is a Fern test? It is a microscopic slide test to determine the presence of amniotic fluid leakage. That is here the specimen is obtained from the external os and vaginal pool and it is examined under the microscope and while we examining under microscope we can see a fern like pattern which indicates the presence of the amniotic fluid. That is a fern test. So it is a microscopic slide test in order to determine the presence of amniotic fluid leakage. In this, the specimen is obtained from the external os and the vaginal pool and it is examined under the microscope and while if the amniotic fluid is present, then there will be a fern like pattern can be seen under the microscope. Next test is the nitrosin test. Nitrosin test is also a test used to detect the presence of amniotic fluid in the vaginal secretion. Usually, these vaginal secretions are acidic, acidic that is pH is 4.5 to 5.5 but this amniotic fluid is alkaline that is pH is 7 to 7.5 so if amniotic fluid is present in the vaginal secretions it will turn it will uh, turn this nitrosin uh, strip into deep blue which indicates that membranes are probably ruptured okay so nitrosin usually the vaginal secretions is acidic and amniotic fluid is alkaline if uh, amniotic fluid is present in the vaginal secretions when we are using this test that is a nitrosin strip it will convert the nitrosin strip into a deep blue which indicates that the membranes are uh, ruptured and the amniotic fluid uh, is present in the vaginal strip that is a amniotic fluid leakage is there next question maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is elevated in the following except Options A. Multiple pregnancies B. Open neural tube defects C. RH isoimmunization D. Down syndrome Answer is D. Down syndrome This maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is uh, decreased that is low in case of Down syndrome In other conditions that is a multiple pregnancy, open neural tube defects and RH isoimmunization MSAFP level will be elevated so this maternal serum alpha fetal protein is a onco fetal protein which is produced by the yolk sac and the fetal liver and its increased level can be seen in open neural tube defects multiple pregnancies then intrauterine fetal death then anterior abdominal wall defect and renal anomalies and in rh isoimmunization and its low level can be seen in conditions like trisomy for example the down syndrome and gestational trophoblastic disease Next question, an antenatal mother with a positive uh, contraction stress test, which of the following can be suspected? Options A, uteroplacental insufficiency, B, placenta previa, C, preeclampsia, D, neural tube defects. Answer is A, uteroplacental insufficiency. So the contraction stress test or otherwise it is known as the oxytocin challenge test so uh, contraction stress test is a procedure uh, used to evaluate the placental sufficiency by assessing fetal response to the physiological stress it is a procedure used to evaluate the placental sufficiency by assessing the response of the fetus to the physiological stress here the physiological stress is the artificially induced uterine contractions either by the ma uh, manual stimulation of the breast or by the oxytocin challenge test that is by administering oxytocin this uterine contractions are stimulated and after that we are evaluating uh, the fetal response to that uh, physiological stress and if it is positive that is uh, positive CST indicates a compromised fetus due to the utero placental insufficiency 
and this positive CST may be associated with more chances of IUD, fetal distress in labor and low APGAR score. Next question, NST that is non-stress test is reactive in a pregnant woman then the priority action of a nurse. Options A. No need of any action B. Report mother C. Suggest OCT D. None of the above Ab op Answer is A. No need of any action because the baby is healthy Non-stress test It is an external electronic monitoring procedure used to assess the fetal well-being it evaluates the fetal heart rate in response to the fetal moment. The procedure here is that an external transducer and the toco dynamometer is applied to the client and the client is positioned on the left lateral position and we are monitoring for 20 minutes. And also uh, we should instruct the mother to press a button every time she feels the fetal moment which is used as a reference point to assess the fetal heart rate response. Once again, this non-stress test is an external electro electronic monitoring procedure which is used to assess the fetal well-being. That is, it is evaluating the fetal heart rate in response to the fetal moment. Uh, the procedure is that we are providing an external transducer that is we are applying an external transducer and topo dynamometer uh, to the client and the client is positioned in the left lateral position we are monitoring for the 20 minutes. And also we are instructing the client, uh, client to press a button every time when she feels the fetal moment which is used as a reference point to assess the fetal heart rate response. Here we are checking whether there is any acceleration in the fetal heart rate in response to the fetal moment. If there is any acceleration in fetal heart rate in response to the fetal moment then we can say, the, we can say that the fetus is healthy. So if the test is reactive that means there is two or more fetal heart rate accelerations of at least 15 beats per minute lasting at least 15 seconds from the beginning of the acceleration to the end in association with the fetal moments during a 20 minute period. That is uh, reactive indicates a healthy fetus. That is the result requires two or more fetal heart rate accelerations of at least 15 beats per minute lasting at least 15 seconds from the beginning of the acceleration to the end in association with the fetal moments during a 20 minute period. Non-reactive means the absence of any fetal reactivity. In other words, we can say that no acceleration or accelerations of less than 15 beats per minute or lasting less than 15 seconds in duration occur during a 40 minute observation. Next question, which of the following initial assessment should be done by a nurse for a pregnant woman who is attached to external electronic fetal monitor? Options A, determining intensity of contractions, B, determining frequency of contractions, C, identifying type of accelerations, D. Assessing baseline fetal heart rate. Answer is D. Assessing baseline fetal heart rate. So this baseline fetal heart rate uh, means the average range of beats per minute that is recorded within a 10 minute time frame. Normal range is between the 120 and 160 beats per minute at the time of delivery. So before at attaching, to, uh, attaching an external electronic fetal monitor, nurse should first assess the baseline fetal heart rate in order to identify whether there is an acceleration or deceleration of the fetal heart rate in response to the uh, uterine contractions. Next question. Commonest congenital heart lesion complicating pregnancy. Options A. Mitral stenosis. B. Mitral regurgitation. C. Aortic stenosis. D. Aortic regurgitation. Answer is a mitral stenosis. So the commonest congenital heart lesion complicating pregnancy is mitral stenosis. So mitral stenosis is the commonest heart lesion occurs during pregnancy that is uh, at about 80 percent 
and this mortality uh, mortality during pregnancy ranges between 5 to 15 percent then mortality due to the aortic stenosis is the highest during perinatal period that is about 30 percent so the commonest heart lesion uh, occurs during pregnancy is the mitral stenosis and aortic stenosis is the valvular lesions which can cause death during the labor next question commonest asynotic heart disease complicated pregnancy options a coaptation of aorta b ventricular septal defect c patent ductus arteriosus d atrial septal defect answer is d atrial septal defect so the commonest asynotic heart disease complicated pregnancy is atrial septal defect and the commonest synotic heart disease complicated pregnancy is tetralogy of fallot Next question, a maternity nurse should screen for diabetes mellitus in pregnancy at Options A, 28 to 32 weeks B, 18 to 22 weeks C, 24 to 28 weeks D, 6 to 17 weeks Answer is C, 24 to 28 weeks So a maternity nurse should screen for di diabetes mellitus in pregnancy at 24 to 28 weeks That is GDM, that is a gestational diabetes mellitus usually present uh, late in the second trimester or during the third trimester. So, its screening should be performed between 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy by using 50 gram oral glucose. Next question, the drug of choice for the management of gestational diabetes mellitus. Options A, glipicide, B, insulin, C, metformin, D, Troglitazone. Answer is B. Insulin. So the drug of choice for management of the GDM is insulin. Oral anti-diabetic anti drug um, use, that is used during pregnancy are not safe because it can cross the placenta. Next question. Which of the following condition is associated with the gestational diabetes mellitus? Options A. Oligohydramnios. B. Polyhydramnios. C. Hyper, hypercalcemia D. Both B and C Answer is B. Polyhydramnios So polyhydramnios is a condition that is associated with a GDM Next question Commonest heart disease complicated in pregnancy Options A. Myocardial infection B. Congestive cardiac failure C. Rheumatic heart disease D. Myocarditis Answer is C. Rheumatic heart disease. So, the commonest heart disease complicated in pregnancy is rheumatic heart disease. Next question. LS ratio that is lecithin sphingomyelin ratio is a reliable indicator of options A. Congenital heart disease B. Neural tube defect C. Fetal maturity D. Gender of the fetus Answer is C. Fetal maturity. So, less than sphingomyelin ratio is a reliable indicator of fetal maturity. Lecithin sphingomyelin ratio is the ratio of the lecithin to sphingomyelin in the amniotic fluid. It is used to assess the maturity of the fetal lung. That is, until about 34th week of gestation, the lungs produce less lecithin than the sphingomyelin. As the fetal lungs begin to mature, they produce more lecithin than sphingomyelin. So, uh, in a mature fetus, the less than sphingomyelin ratio will be 2 is to 1. Next question. Snowstorm appearance in ultrasound during first trimester indicate. Options A. Multiple pregnancy. B. Oligohydramnios. C. Hydatidiform mole. D. Placenta previa. Answer is C. Hydatidiform mole. The snowstorm appearance in ultrasound during the first trimester indicates a high dietary form mole. So, this high dietary form mole or vesicular mole is an abnormal condition of the placenta caused by the partial degenerative and proliferative change of the young chorionic villi. That is, it is results from the overproduction of the tissue that is supposed to develop into the placenta. It is a rare mass or growth that forms inside the uterus at the beginning of the pregnancy and is a type of gestational trophoblastic disease. 
two types of high dilated form mole is there that is a partial molar pregnancy and complete molar pregnancy in partial molar pregnancy there is an abnormal placenta and some fetal development is there and in complete molar pregnancy there is an abnormal placenta but no fetus next question which of the following drugs are to be prescribed in first trimester of pregnancy options a iron b folic acid c both of the above d none of the above answer is b folic acid so folic acid is a drug which is to be prescribed in the first trimester of the pregnancy iron should not be prescribed in the first trimester uh, due to the effect of the nausea and vomiting so administer only folic acid in the first trimester next question supplementary iron therapy is started in options a 12 weeks onwards b 16 weeks onwards c 20 weeks onwards d 24 weeks onwards answer is a 12 weeks onwards supplementary iron therapy is started in 12 weeks onwards next question the extra calories needed by a woman having single ten pregnancy options a 200 kilo calorie b 300 kilo calorie c 500 kilo calorie d 100 kilo calorie answer is b 300 kilo calorie so the extra calories needed by a woman during pregnancy is a 300 kilo calorie there is a total iron requirement um, during pregnancy is 1000 mg and daily requirement of calcium during the second half of pregnancy is 1000 mg and during lactation is 1500 mg next question which of the following is a diagnostic finding in case of vesicular mole options a fever b expulsion of grape like vesicles per vaginum c varying degree of lower abdominal pain d vaginal bleeding answer is b expulsion of grape like vesicles per vagina which is the confirmatory diagnosis in case of vesicular mole next question which of the following blood group is heard as highest risk of developing high dietary form mole options a a blood group b b blood group c a b d o blood group answer is a b next question what is the shape of uterus in multiple gestation options a globular b barrel c round d oval answer is b barrel so barrel is the shape of the uterus in the multiple gestation barrel shaped uterus next question white current vaginal discharge indicate options a abortion b lochia c multiple pregnancy d high dietary form mole answer is d high dietary form mole next question once a client had a history of high dietary form mole she should avoid next pregnancy for options a 6 months b 1 year c 3 months d 9 months answer is b 1 year it is important to avoid pregnancy and to use a reliable contraceptive for 6 to 12 months after the treatment for a molar pregnancy women who get pregnant too soon after a molar pregnancy have a higher risk for having another molar pregnancy next question fishy odor 